particularly if you're you have no preparation for it. How do you begin to feel? Oh my, this this person really is uh, at, at this farthest end of the spectrum. Right. Well, let's also begin with talking about right now in the DSM, there are five identified dissociative disorders. Mm. And there's also dissociative process so Mm -hmm. that someone can be mildly dissociative and that doesn't make them DID. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I think that a number of clinicians have really made mistakes and big mistakes by by seeing, if they see dissociation, then automatically this is a person with dissociative identity disorder. That's not the case. And the criteria for DID in the DSM currently is pretty loose, um, but nonetheless it's what we we have to work with. And the criteria are that the individual um, executive control of the individual moves to another part self. And while the individual is in that other part self, they have amnesia, they're amnestic for what happens during that period of time. So you may see someone switch into a part self that's dramatically different and then switch back. And when they switch back, they're perplexed because they've lost time and they have no idea what happened during that interaction. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of the things that you might see clinically. And when that happens, when you see somebody move back and forth in that way, it's really important to ask them whether they have memory for what transpired because it's that lack of memory that is one of the diagnostic markers. Now, that said, I don't ever um, diagnose anybody with DID without having seen that happen a number of times. Mm 